Welcome to our Tech Explainer video. Today, we're diving into a common challenge faced by many developers. Our viewer asks, how do you correctly integrate JAX-RS with CDI? Let's set the stage. Our viewer has been successfully using JAX-RS with CDI by annotating their service and Deo beans with AppPath. However, they recently encountered a new challenge while integrating a Quartz job into their application. They want to know how to inject their account service into this job without using the path annotation. Welcome back to another technical video. Today, we're gonna to be going through your question, answering it, and hopefully finding that solution. Guys, remember to stay just a little bit crazy like me, and hopefully you get to that resolution. Now, let's continue on to the video. Let's begin by understanding how to integrate JAX-RS with CDI. In your case, you want to inject your account service into a Quartz job. Normally, you would annotate your resource classes with app path to make them accessible as REST endpoints. You mentioned that after adding Delta Spike dependencies, the injection of account service into your job class worked without needing the app path annotation. This is because Delta Spike enhances CDI capabilities, allowing for better integration with Quartz. Now regarding your question about HK2 and Weld, Jersey uses HK2 for dependency injection while your application is using Weld. This is why you encountered an unsatisfied dependency exception when trying to inject account service without at path. To make HK2 injections work without using at path, you can register your services with HK2 explicitly. This involves creating a binding in your application configuration to ensure HK2 knows about your beans. Finally, mixing CDI frameworks like HK2 and Delta Spike can lead to complications. While it is possible, it's essential to ensure that both frameworks are compatible and that you manage the life cycle of your beans correctly to avoid unexpected behavior. Let's now look at a user-suggested answer. To integrate JAX-RS with CDI, you don't need to annotate your account service CDI bean with path. If CDI is enabled, you can inject any CDI bean into your JAX-RS resource. Here's a simple example. Create a service resource class with a path annotation and inject the account service. Use the getAccount method to retrieve account details. You can also mix EJB and CDI annotations, like using stateless with path, which allows you to benefit from EJB transactions in your REST resources. For Quartz integration, since it manages its own threads, you can't inject CDI beans directly. However, using the Delta Spike module allows you to inject CDI beans into Quartz jobs. If you're facing HK2 issues, it might be due to a missing dependency. Also, consider implementing your own job factory to instantiate jobs with Bean Manager for better CDI integration. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer.
To integrate JAXRS with CDI, first ensure that your resources and Jersey Endpoint classes are CDI aware. You can set the Bean Discovery mode to all or annotated and use the appropriate annotations like at dependent or at request scoped. Next, include the Jersey extension in your project dependencies to connect CDI with the HK2 discovery mechanism. For more detailed guidance, refer to the official Oracle documentation on JAXRS. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. To integrate JAXRS with CDI, remember that by default, only beans with CDI annotations are recognized. This is due to the annotated discovery mode in Java EE7. If your account job class isn't annotated, you need to add a scope annotation like at application scoped for CDI to manage it. Alternatively, you can create a CDI producer for account job beans. For more details, check the well documentation on producer methods. And that's it. I hope it's helped find you to that resolution that you're looking for. And if it did, please just take a moment, go down, hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Now, until the next time, I hope you have a good one. Cheers.